Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, welcome back to 3D Collisions and Game Maker. Today we're dealing with triangles, we are going to figure out if a triangle is intersecting with a point or if a triangle is intersecting with a sphere. If I have time I'll go further than that today, but I'm only anticipating to get points and spheres done today. So first let me adopt another design pattern that I made use of in Act 1 of the series, and uh, inside triangles checkpoint method I'm just going to uh, flip that on its head and turn that into return points dot check triangle self and in triangles check sphere method I'm going to also turn this on its head and return sphere dot check triangle and this is just going to this is just going to uh, make it so that we don't have to implement the same thing in both triangles check point method and in the points check triangle method uh, one is just going to refer to the other. So, I, uh, I like to think that the method for checking to see if a point is contained within a triangle is actually fairly clever. It's just one of those things that I'm glad that there are smart people out there to figure out so that I don't have to, because I, I would not have thought of this. I would probably have tried to do something a lot more complicated and a lot less efficient. So, we have a triangle, and a triangle is, con is composed of three points, which are all coplanar, as I said in the last video. That means all three points of the triangle lie on the same plane. And if you take a fourth point, if you take the point that we're trying to check to see if it is contained within the triangle, and if you try to construct a pyramid out of that point, you're going to find yourself with three more triangles. Importantly, each of those triangles representing the, uh, the slopes of the pyramid, the walls of the pyramid if you will, uh, those all have a surface normal, as does the original triangle, as do all triangles. And if the surface normals of those three new triangles are all the same, you know that the point is lying flat on the triangle, because the only way that you would have the surface normals of the three, um, the three new triangles all pointing in the same direction would be if the, uh, if the point was, was lying flat on the triangle. If it was above the triangle, or behind it, or somewhere else off in space, the, uh, the surface normals of the, uh, the three walls would be pointing in different directions. And I personally think that's rather clever. Hey. I went into my research for this series not having any idea how, how this was going to be worked out, I think the solution is rather elegant. So to get started, I'm going to say var uh, pa is going to be triangle pa, I said. It's going to be triangle dot a dot sub self dot position. Uh, var pb is going to be triangle dot b dot sub self dot position. Uh, var P, um, pc is going to be triangle dot c dot sub self dot position. Uh, we are just we are just subtracting the points that we're checking against the triangle from the position of each of the three vertices. This is going to transform the coordinate space of the triangle from whatever world space it exists in to, uh, to coordinate space relative to the point. You could technically also say our pp is going to be equal to self dot position dot sub self dot p o s i t i o n. I'm really losing my keyboard today. But as uh, the, uh, the eagle-eyed observers among you may, may realize that this is just going to be a zero vector because anything minus itself is zero, so we don't have to bother with that, which is probably honest, honestly a good thing because if I say the word PP too many times in a video, I know I'm going to get some, some weird comments that don't have anything to do with math. Anyway, we are going to generate the surface normals of each of the three triangles. Uh, this is going to look a lot like the get normal method inside the uh, the triangle shape. We're just going to be finding the cross product of one side versus another and normalizing that, and that is going to be a surface normal. So if I were to scroll back up here to points check triangle, we can say var norm, and I'm going to call this PBC is going to be uh, PB dot cross product against PC, and we're going to normalize that so that it has a unit length of 1. Next, var norm pca is going to be um, pc.cross pa. Normalize that. And lastly, var norm pab is going to be pa.cross pb. Normalize that. I told you that we were going to be seeing a lot of this, uh, this abc triangle notation in, this, uh, in Acts 2. Next, let's compare the dot products. So again, if the normals, if all three of these normal vectors are all facing the same way, then we know that the um, we know that the point is on the triangle, and we can say if norm p 
let's say PBC dot dot against norm PCA. If this is less than one, so uh, remember a dot product of one is going to mean that the two vectors are pointing in the same direction. Uh, two normalized vectors are pointing in the same direction. So if the, uh, if the dot product of BC against the BC triangle versus the CA triangle is less than one, then we know those normals are pointing in a different direction from each other. We can say return false. The point is not inside the triangle. Uh, next, we have another side. So if norm PBC dot dot PBC, was it? Yeah. Why is that not highlighting? There it goes. Game Maker is just taking its time today. Dot norm PAB is less than one, uh, same deal. Then we know that the uh, that the point does not lie within the triangle. And if neither of these returns false, if neither of these conditions are true, if um, PBC dot PCA equals one and PBC dot PAB equals one, then uh, the points the point is contained within the triangle and we can return true. And that is checking to see whether a point is inside the triangle. So I've updated the tests a little bit. Uh, for now, to make it easier to check the triangle against the point, I am generating the triangle with its, um, with its z-coordinate of zero again, so that it's lying flat on the ground. And that's just going to make it actually easier for me to put the point in a position where it's intersecting the triangle. And I've also added a little bit of code so that we can, uh, we can actually move the triangle around and also so that it's, um, it's drawn in the correct location when it's moved, moved around. So that'll be a little bit different from the test project at the end of the last video. In any case, let me run the game, and I'm going to uh, zoom in, create myself a triangle. We can see that the, that the triangle is overlapping the point. The point is contained within the triangle. If I were to move the triangle around, we can see where it starts and stops intersecting. If I were to move it down, uh, we can see that the triangle is not containing the point. If I move it up, we can see that the triangle is also not containing the point. If I try to move it back to the origin, uh, we, can get them, we can get them overlapping again. Okay, uh, triangles can intersect points. That's, that's great. So if I were to go back and implement check triangle for the collision sphere, um, if, you, if you remember a joke that I beat into the ground in act one, you probably can guess what the, uh, what the overlap test for a sphere in a triangle is going to look like. And I'll give you a hint, uh, spheres are just really big points. And if you think that I'm just going to copy and paste the, uh, for example, the check axis line bounding box against the sphere code and substitute all of the relevant values, then you would be correct. I am going to, um, I'm going to say check triangle is gonna equal a function which takes a triangle as an input. Uh, it gets the nearest point to that triangle, which we implemented last time. It is going to get the distance to that nearest point and it is going to return true or false based on whether or not the distance to that point is less than or equal to the sphere's radius. And this should be the moment of truth to make sure that I implemented the nearest point method for triangles correctly. I believe I did. Um, I, uh, I looked over that again after the end of the last recording. So let me run the game and we're going to be creating ourselves one, a sphere, and two, a triangle, and three, something is gonna crash. Um, point dot check triangle. Line 300, did I, did I misspell something? That should be in the nearest point method that I wrote, line 300. Oh, you know what? This needs to be a new call point, ha! Huh? Okay, wow, that's possibly the dumbest mistake I could have made when I, uh, when I typed this out. Anyway, let's try that again. That should, that should, uh, that should inform us whether or not a sphere is contained within a triangle or a triangle is contained within a sphere, one or the other. So we can see that the shapes are overlapping uh, when they're like this. I can move the triangle around. We have the shapes barely, barely intersecting each other here. Uh, there's that Pinocchio nose, which is just the Raycast hit location. Uh, we can see, if I were to zoom uh, out a little bit, if I were to move off to the, to the left, the triangle is no longer intersecting the sphere. If I were to move off to the right and see if I can move the camera in a way so that I can actually see that, uh, the triangle is is no longer intersecting the sphere. Uh, up and down. I've gotten my directions all kinds of backwards today. You are you are still intersecting, no longer intersecting at the top, no longer intersecting. So we've implemented triangles and spheres. Okay. Let's see. That is worthy of a of a git commit. I should probably uh, I should probably break this up into points 
and triangles and spheres and triangles, but they're pretty they're both pretty simple, so points points and spheres and triangles. So, this video hasn't been going on for too long, but it's gone on for long enough that I don't want to try and combine anything else into it because that would probably start to to run a little long in the duration. So, if you want the code for this, uh, look for the GitHub repository in the video description. This should be the 0.10 release. I'm not going to create the release itself on, on recording uh, today, as I did the last time. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, uh, there are links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this one, and one let's make a tower defense game. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Connor, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.